This video will begin Unit 8 on Ecology. It's the last unit of the year for AP Biology. We'll start with 8.1, Responses to the Environment, which is primarily going to be dealing with uh, organism behavior, animal behavior to be more specific. Uh, organisms' behavior and their responses to, um, or their responses to the environment basically are part of their genetic makeup. Uh, or could be part of their genetic makeup. And so an organism has to respond to its environment in order to adapt to its environment uh, so that it can be more fit. Um, and so those organisms change over time in order to adapt and become uh, better able to survive and reproduce. Bears are a great example of this as cities have began to encroach in bear environments. Bears have used that opportunity in order to adapt. Here's a bear eating out of a dumpster. For instance, that bear is an opportunist. It's uh, finding food that's an easy source of food. Of course, this causes problems for people and bears um, in that. And that, you know, behavior will lead to our overall fitness of an organism. Uh, this has to do with communication between organisms, obviously. You know, here's a picture of these organisms communicating in order to um, in order to successfully reproduce, be an example of that. And so animals are able to communicate through several different means. It could be a visual communication like we see here. It could be a tactile communication like we see here. It could be chemical, it could be electrical. Um, there's communication in order to indicate dominance. There's communication in order to indicate um, reproduction, territory, food, all these different things that are going on with that. Uh, communication is either going to be innate or learned. And so what we mean by innate is these are uh, characteristics that uh, an organism is born with. It's on their DNA uh, versus learned behavior, something that they learn as a result of being alive. And uh, these two things can have some blending obviously uh, it's an innate behavior to learn and then certain innate behaviors are um, bettered by learning here's a picture of a duck um, eating some bread ducks have learned that when people uh, go to parks they're going to bring bread with them and so ducks um, go and eat that bread which is not good for them uh, I did see uh, a story of one duck that had learned to take the bread to another part of the pond and stick it in the water and fish with it. Um, that is a learned behavior that will die with that duck uh, versus the innate behavior to eat or to forage, which is innate for all ducks because it is written on their DNA. Um, a couple of other examples of behavior that leads to uh, greater fitness. One of those is cooperative behavior. This is when um, organisms will team together, essentially, in order to increase the fitness of the entire population. Wolves are a great example of this. Um, they hunt in packs. They pretty much do everything in packs. They have a pecking order that's social behavior, which is also going to contribute to their survival. And they've become very successful species because of their ability to work together. There are other instances where animals will exchange information um, as a way of communicating. You know, here's a picture of a prairie dog warning the other prairie dogs that there's probably a problem on the prairie and that they should all go underground. There are other kinds of warnings or um, markers. One of those is called a postmatism where an animal will exhibit certain behaviors or uh, just have a certain phenotypic um, traits that are warning to other animals like a skunk lifting its tail is a warning to get out of the way um, that snake its coloration is a warning don't get near me i'm problems and so um, this keeps the snake safe because other organisms don't want anything to do with it and uh, that's and the skunk obviously is able to stay safe as a result of this as well these are learned behaviors though um, though there is some innate behaviors uh, associated with fear of, you know, fear of snakes is a great example of that. It's kind of an innate behavior, but um, can be learned. You can learn that certain snakes aren't dangerous, for instance. That's so, you, again, talking about that behavior. Um, 
with mammals, uh, territoriality is a big concept. Uh, the, you know, mammals will mark their territory in various ways. Here you see a dog uh, marking its territory, explaining to other dogs that this is where he lives, though he probably doesn't live there. He's just um, acting like he would have if he was in the wild. And so um, marking territory, this is going to warn other competitors. This is going to alert um, others that may be there. It could also be used to attract mates, to uh, communicate social status. There's a lot of things that can go on here um, that are going to communicate with other animals in the area. And this leads to the last idea of kind of the, one of the highest orders of animal behavior is social behavior, where animals will actually kind of form a a pecking order or even a caste system that allows them to have certain jobs very similar to our own civilization um, in that you know certain people do certain things for the betterment of the whole society you have you know in a bee colony you have bees that reproduce you have bees that gather food you have bees that tend the young you have all of these bees that are doing certain things not for their individual gain but for the gain of the whole society which is going to lead to better overall fitness for the species as a whole